Hi everyone, my name is Harper, and I hate what I've made of myself. For the love of my boyfriend, I made myself into a real monster. A monster like no other, for which I'm deeply ashamed. I will tell you what can happen if you don't listen to your head, but only to your heart, which I blindly trusted. My boyfriend Benjamin and I dated for about six months, and it was like a fairy tale. I fell in love with him from the first moment, and then I was blown away. Benjamin was good-looking, he had a part-time job, so he seemed so independent at 17 years old. He didn't have a very wealthy family, but that didn't bother me one bit. I knew he was very kind on the inside, and that was the main thing. Benjamin would take me to restaurants, cafes, and movies. We'd go out of town, away from people. He would come over in the middle of the night, and I'd be like, wow, what a guy. There were times when we'd just break up, and he'd call, saying he missed me. I thought it was so romantic. But then, things changed. Benjamin became more abrupt, and we saw each other less often. I can't remember how worried I was about this because I was already head over heels in love with him. What would I do now? What if he left me? What if he did? It's over, right? I insisted on seeing him, and he did come. Again, in a bad mood. We sat in his car, and he stared bored out the window. I was worried, and I asked him what was wrong. Benjamin said that his family had somehow found out about me, and they were against our relationship. What? How did they find out? And why are they against it? You don't know my family yet. They knew right away that you were a girl from a good, full family. Great and all that. They told me I didn't deserve a bright girl like you because I could only taint your life. How's that? But why? Why would they even think that? I'm fine with you, and I don't want us to break up, Benjamin. He looked depressed, and suddenly, he was crying in front of me. It almost broke my heart. At that moment, I wanted so much to comfort him, to hold him. I cried too, and told him that he only made my life more beautiful, that I loved him and I didn't want to break up. But Benjamin said, What if my relatives are right? What if I'm just not right for you? With those words, he asked me to get out of his car. I was in pain. I was in so much pain that I couldn't breathe properly. I lay on the floor like a fish on dry land, and I greedily groped for air, but it was still not enough. After three days of terrible depression, I finally came out of my room, and my mother asked me what was wrong. I was silent, and then I asked her her opinion. Mom, how do you think, if two people love each other, but their relatives don't allow them to be together, what should they do? Well, your dad's parents didn't accept me at first either, and we loved each other very much. What did I do? I wanted to be with him, and so I tried to establish a relationship with his family by finding common ground. That's it? It's not as hard as it sounds. It's not as easy as it seems at first glance. You can only find common ground when you're on the same page, when you do something together and understand each other, and most importantly, when your boyfriend believes in you. My mom's words made me think about a lot of things. Basically, they thought I was too saintly, right? Maybe I should just do something bad once, and then they'd let me stay with my Benjamin. I started with myself. I knew where my boyfriend hung out more often and went there uninvited. I was dressed in all black, chewing gum and giving him a bitchy look, and walked in so boldly that Benjamin choked on his drink. Before he could say anything, I took the beer from his hands and drank it instead. Well, how about this? I asked and finished it. His friends started shouting loudly about how cool I was, that I was unrecognizable and that I looked spectacular. After a good night, Benjamin said he was grateful that I'd gone to all this trouble for him. Before going home, we decided to take a walk, and suddenly he took my hand and dragged me to the mini market. He put a chocolate bar in my pocket in front of me. I was surprised. I asked in a whisper, What are you doing? And my boyfriend smiled and said, Ready to try it? Ready to go for it? For me? And I froze. I knew stealing was bad, and I didn't know my boyfriend was into it. At the cash register, he slipped chocolate bar into my purse and winked. My heart was pounding as we paid for the water and walked out. Benjamin picked me up in his arms and shouted as if we'd won the lottery. It means so much to me that you chose to live in my world. I love you, he said, for the first time so sincerely. I almost lost my mind at those words. But to say that I got some kind of pleasure? No, I couldn't. Then the thefts continued, and each time they got bigger. 
first groceries, then phones, watches, wallets. Each time, I was more and more uncomfortable. I would rob men, women, steal their handbags, and then run to Benjamin's hideout, where he would wait for me like a dog that had returned with a stick to its owner and received a portion of affection. One day, he pointed out an old grandfather to me and told me to steal his bag. He won't get you anyway. He's too old, he said. I hesitated. Then Benjamin got a call from his mom. He talked and then came up to me. Mom invited you to dinner. Can you believe it? She wants to meet you. Oh, I was so looking forward to this moment. After all, it meant she approved of me. I shouldn't have let my boyfriend down. I loved him and I intended to fight for our happiness. And then everything happened so quickly. I ran to the old man. I wanted to grab his bag and run away. But he suddenly grabbed a bag so sharply, and we stood in front of each other and dragged the bag between us. Give it to me. No, it's mine. No, it's mine. No, it's mine. It's mine. I had already realized that he wouldn't just give it back, but Benjamin was looking and showing me, Run faster. I started biting the old man's hand, and he shouted, Daughter, this is my last money for treatment. Please don't do this. But I was no longer in control of myself, and I ripped out the bag with money and it crumbled to the ground. The old man grabbed his heart and collapsed. I looked in Benjamin's direction, but he was gone, and the police were driving by. I was caught red-handed. Oh no! Benjamin! Benjamin! I shouted. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. The accusation was read to me. I was shaking with fear and shock. What to do now? Why had he abandoned me? Where had he gone? I was allowed one call and I called him, but he didn't answer, so I called him at home. His mother answered the phone. I started talking to her as if I'd known her for years. All I heard in response was, Young lady, I don't know you. My son's girlfriend has a different name. You've made a mistake. She hung up, and I had no idea what was going on. Just then, a policeman came in and told me that the grandfather I'd attacked and tried to rob was dead. He had a heart attack. I'm afraid you're in big trouble. They told me. What? No way! How can that be? How did he die? What are you talking about? He had a weak heart. How did you know he had money with him? I didn't know. We found out you were stealing from other people, too. You have at least six or seven counts of robbery and theft on your record. Did you know that all those people you stole from were family? What do you mean? What the police officer told me next ruined me. It turned out that Benjamin had lied to me. In fact, his family was not against me. Moreover, they were not aware that I existed at all. The people my boyfriend was pointing out to me were people he knew. In fact, his girlfriend's family. Her family didn't accept him, and he decided to take a liking to them. He used me to steal things and money, and I would give it to him and he'd supposedly find the burglars and nobly give it back. And now, after the death of his girlfriend's grandfather, things have taken a serious turn. What happened to me? Well, I'm in jail. The case is being considered by the court, but you know what? I will answer for my actions, as I'm truly sorry for everything and repent, but I will not go down alone. I promise I will avenge myself, because Benjamin is just as much a criminal and his place is next to me, behind bars. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah. I am a teenager who took desperate measures. I got plastic surgery in hopes of changing my life, but for some reason, it still hasn't changed. First things first, I go to one of the top schools in North Carolina. Yes, our state isn't as flashy as many others, but still, everywhere has its best and its worst. So my best friend Gwen and I were kind of the most popular girls in school. Gwen was considered more in charge than me because, well, because she's prettier. And I had problems with my nose, eyes and lips and teeth. So I had some defects, but I was still one of the chosen ones. I'd earned my place in the sun and wasn't about to give it up. Gwen and I weren't friends before. She didn't even notice me at first, or only when she made fun of me. She and her friends called me ugly, and that's why they didn't want me on their team. But I know how to get my way, so I decided that I would be friends with her and only with her. My family had money. I was saving up money for plastic surgery for almost my whole face to be more beautiful, and maybe even take Gwen's place someday. Gwen's friends wouldn't let me anywhere near her at first, but I gained her trust. I came up with a cunning plan and started setting up her friends. With Kat, I faked stealing a teacher's purse and blamed it on her, and she was expelled. This was easier than Anna. 
I'd just seen her kissing Gwen's boyfriend and leaked a picture of them online. That left only Kira. She was the trickiest one of all, so I left her for dessert. She caught me outside the house one day and threatened me. Kira grabbed me by the collar and pinned me against the wall. Look here, I don't know what you're up to, but I figured out your plan a long time ago. Do you want to be in our shoes? Kat and Dan are too stupid, but you can't fool me. Do you like going over your head? The only way you're talking over mine is over my dead body, okay? I'm not doing anything over your dead body. The next morning, Kira lay in the middle of the school convulsing. After that moment, Gwen couldn't be friends with her anymore. Kira had to transfer. You ask me if I did something to her? Of course I did. Then, when Gwen was left alone, I was there for her and supported her in every way. So we became close, and then I became her entourage, and my popularity skyrocketed. I cannot say that being friends with Gwen was a great pleasure. Most of the time her character was just unbearable. Now I understand why she had three friends, because it's very difficult to cope with her alone. But I needed Gwen, so I put up with her. First, I had to get plastic surgery as I wanted. In the meantime, Gwen and I were walking after school on her errands. I was carrying her purse and unwillingly listening to uninteresting stories. Hey, what are you doing there? Huh? What? Are you even listening to me? Yes, I am. I'm listening. Never mind. We'll go to the store. I'll buy something. And then what? Then we go home. I don't need to go to the store. Can I go then? And not carry my stuff? You know my car is being repaired. I can't carry heavy things. It's not good for me. Well, it's hard for me too. What did you say? You're my friend, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm your friend, not your jockey. Well, okay, I wanted to give you my perfume and Chanel, but since you- Fine, I'll go. I knew it was manipulative, but since I already put up with her for a while anyway, why not get nice perfume as a gift? But it was like that all the time. Gwen would send me to do all the dirty work for her. Wash her car, walk the dogs, pick up the dry cleaning, do her homework. That wasn't exactly how I pictured my position. If Gwen wasn't at school, I was considered first after her. But the kids didn't treat me the same as her anyway. They weren't afraid of me. For example, on one of those days, I dressed up and came to get all the attention for myself. But no one even greeted me when I entered the classroom. Hey, guys, why aren't we saying hello? Where's Gwen? She won't be here today, but I'm here. And there was silence. I started to get mad. Why aren't you saying hello to me? Then my classmate, Berta, stood up and said, Anna, why should we? You're just Gwen's bitch. What did you say? What did you hear? You're just a sixth grader, and we don't talk to sixth graders. How dare you? I got so mad, I jumped Berta. I ripped out a couple of pieces of her hair. We were quickly separated, though. I saw everybody filming me, and I ran to the bathroom. A few minutes later, a video of us fighting was leaked online with the caption, Scary Six thinks she's a queen. Gwen immediately started calling me. How can you not get me? I'm not scary? Well, I'll show you all. You will be friends with me. You will say how beautiful I am. Prettier than Gwen. Prettier than any of you. No one will say a word to me. No one can say no to me. I screamed. I went home, emptied out my piggy bank and told my mom I needed plastic surgery right away. Most of the amount was collected. I got my mom to call the surgeon, and I got an appointment for the nearest date. I didn't go to school yet, and then I went in for surgery. The whole time, I was excited. All I dreamed about was getting back as soon as possible, taking Gwen's place, and being the number one girl at school. The rehabilitation was long, and I was homeschooled online. Then the vacation passed, and finally... I went to school in a new look, with a new, beautiful face. Not everyone recognized me, but some did with great difficulty. I walked down the hallway and smiled. On the threshold stood Gwen. She said hello, and I ignored her. I was 100% sure I was now going to turn my back on her. But a few days went by, and still, no one would talk to me. Gwen got another best friend. I decided to try and make friends with the other girls, but nothing worked. Everyone shunned me. I started chasing boys then, but they shooed me away too. So I went back to Gwen. What, did you think that if you got prettier, people would come to you? No, I just... You did, but you'll still be alone. You know why? Everybody knows that I'm a bitch, but at the same time, I'm respected. 
And you were my bitch always and will be because you don't deserve respect. You're gonna regret that. I ran to the bathroom and started crying. I didn't understand what was wrong. Am I that pathetic? Have I tried so much for everyone and still no one wants to be friends with me? Why? With anger, I raged. In the school, the theater began a dress rehearsal. Gwen played the main role there, of course. I missed everything with my operation, but I wanted to take Gwen's place. The play was Romeo and Juliet. I ran in just as Gwen was standing on top of the set. I couldn't control myself at that moment. I climbed up and pushed her down. She fell. Everyone was frightened, ran up to her and started fussing. And I shouted that now I was the most beautiful, the most popular. Be friends with me. Gwen is gone. She's nobody. And I'm everything. I'm number one. Be friends with me. I shouted. Stop. Will you be my friend? Will you? You fucking psychopath. What did you say? I grabbed a book I could get my hands on and jammed it into Berta's face. Everyone around me got freaked out. They took Gwen to the hospital with a broken arm and me to the station. The school psychologist talked to me. She tried to understand why I had such big inner complexes, but I didn't consider this a setback. I really was perfect, only I did not understand why nobody wanted to be friends with me. The answer came a little later. I was diagnosed with schizophrenia. It turned out that my whole life was a fantasy. The psychologist told my mother that there was no Gwen. Neither was there any Kat, Anna, and Kira, or the whole school in general. I am in treatment now and have been for a very long time. The doctors say that I'm constantly trying to get the attention of other patients, trying to make contact with them, but because they are sick too, they don't understand me. And every time it causes me a flash of anger and aggression. All my drawings show different people, and in the middle, I am the most beautiful and beloved. But in reality, it's not like that. Who am I really? Why is this the way it is? And why am I even telling you this now? I do not know exactly, and who knows? Maybe I was imagining things about the hospital too, huh? Maybe another time my real story will help me tell my new friend, if there is one. What do you guys say? Would you like to come visit my world? In the meantime, write your opinions in the comments below. I've picked out a couple of comments here from the last video for my taste. I can show them to you if you want to see them. Maybe it'll be yours, huh?